Good morning, everybody. Good morning. What a uh, pleasure to be here as uh, your controller-elect. And uh, it's been an exciting uh, last week and a half, and the gravity of the position is really uh, setting in right now. It's one thing, of course, to win an election. It's a totally different thing to do the job and to do it right. And I'm very committed to making sure that that happens, because there is so much to do. But let me back up and just tell you how I started this odyssey, this crazy odyssey of, of running for controller many, many years ago. And I didn't even realize it was going to lead to this particular path. But I remember getting a letter from the then council member of the uh, district that I live in. And it was explaining basically to everybody in the neighborhood why our street was not going to get repaved anytime soon. And it was, a, it was a very nice letter, but basically it explained that that year we had about 6,500 miles of streets and that we were budgeted for about 175 miles of repaving. And so you divide that 175 miles up by 15 council districts, do the math, and we'd really like to pave your street, but it could take up to 30 years. <laughs> and I got this letter and I thought, this is kind of crazy. I've, I've lived in Los Angeles now for about 28 years. And I'm the first of my family to be born in the United States, really so blessed that my parents came here and that I was able to get a, uh, a great education, to go to law school and to be an attorney and a business person, and I was a journalist also for many years. But then, in this city of great possibilities, to get a, a letter that basically says, well, you can wait up to 30 years to get your street repaid, I thought something is severely wrong. And what is that? And where are the problems? And of course, the problems are about the money. And not just whether we have enough of it or not, but how it is that we use it, or misuse it, or waste it, and how it goes astray. So it led me to become obsessed increasingly with everything having to do with the city's finances. And then I got involved with my neighborhood council, and actually Steve Twining, who's a, a former president of the uh, neighborhood council, uh, is here as well, and then began to learn more and more about all of the neighborhoods in Los Angeles, all the challenges that we face, and all the challenges that neighborhood councils face, plus everything that we as neighborhood council members can do and often have been frustrated in being able to do, and how we can kind of break out of that. And that led to neighborhood council budget advocates, and there are a number of those who are here that have been neighborhood council budget advocates, and really an opportunity to delve even deeper into the finances of the city, look at all sorts of opportunities, as I mentioned, to save money, to bring in money, to get more efficient, all of those things. And then, of course, in the process, you learn that it's much easier to say, ah, this can be very easily fixed. Why don't we do that tomorrow? And then you realize, oh, it's not quite so simple as doing that, but you've got to take the first steps, because if you don't do that, then you don't get to your destination in terms of actually seeing some change happen. So this is the background of what led me to run for controller. Now let me fast forward for a moment and, and just say that what I've been doing for the last week and a half is actually getting a good handle over the office and really going on a listening tour, meeting with everybody who is in that office and finding out what they do, how they do it, what their challenges are. And my very first day after the election, I thought Tuesday I might be able to, uh, Tuesday was the election, of course, that Wednesday I might get a little bit of rest. No. Instead, what was happening was that Thursday is when the city council was going to be reviewing the budget, as many of you know. And in that was a provision that was going to essentially gut all of the money available for outside audits of city departments. <laughs> About, it used to be about $750,000 worth, then it got cut to $500,000, and they wanted to cut all of it out. So I found myself spending the whole day, right after the election on Wednesday, calling a bunch of council members and becoming the lobbyist, and saying, you can't do this. And it's not always about having more resources, because more is not always better, but you at least need something. And there are so many opportunities to really save money in those departments if you don't have the resources to at least some rudimentary uh, auditing, then what can you do? So that was the first job, actually, and, and I'm going to be continuing to, uh, to work on that, as well as figuring out how we use the resources that we have in a better way. Which leads me back to neighborhood councils. Because there are so many people in this room 
who, and I know personally from, from having been in a neighborhood council for so many years as well as part of the budget advocates, who have great ideas, great knowledge. I'll be very honest, I get my best ideas often from other people. And people who have actually delved into particular subjects. Um, you know, people like Jack Humphreyville who's here and uh, who, who always has some very interesting insights, not to mention some ideas, and is a great advocate. But there are a lot of advocates who are here. And we have to start as a city really engaging everybody. Not just listening, not just paying lip service to, we want to engage our neighborhood councils. That's wonderful. But we actually want to really put you to work. Uh, it, it's not just about listening, but it's about you actually being able to do something with the knowledge that you have. So one of the things I plan to do is to really convene a group that is going to be on a regular basis, and I'm going to be meeting with a number of, of the budget advocates about how we can integrate that in the best way possible with the controller's office and how the controller's office can capitalize on the brain trust, not to mention steal a couple of your ideas. So that's how we're going to move the city forward. Now, what I'm trying to do in the next couple months is figure out where we get the most bang for our buck. And I've got this very long list of things that I would like to audit, but I'm realistic also because we do not have an unlimited budget and we can't audit everything. So it's about figuring out where we can get the most from the relatively limited resources that we have. And I've got a list of a variety of things. First of all, top on the list is that the city charter actually mandates that there be three audits that are done of the proprietary departments, a minimum of every five years. These are the only ones that are actually required by the charter per se. So the first one up is actually going to be the airport and lava. And the last one was done in September of 2008. So you do the math, five years is coming up this fall. And then there's also going to be one of DWP. It's the uh, Industrial Economic and Administrative Survey. That was last done, it will be five years in February of 2014. But before you can snap your fingers, it's going to be February of 2014. And these are going to be really essential and important audits and requiring a lot of input from everybody here. And I'm really going to look to you to provide that input in a whole variety of different ways. And also to work with those who are in this building. And, and we have the, uh, the head of the uh, DWP here as well. And, and there are some great people here and some great ideas. And we're going to really find a way to make the most of the information that we gather. And also, not just do the survey, but come up with the best set of recommendations that are possible. And you're an essential part of that. I'm also going to be looking at assets of the city. I'm going to be looking at all those special funds. You, you probably saw that uh, $42 million that just sort of kind of disappeared and then reappeared. But we've got 500 plus of those. We don't even know how many we have. That's the craziest part of all. And I don't know how much an audit so much is necessary of that at this point because there have been audits of that. The audits have had recommendations to how you fix the problem, and those have not been implemented. So my focus is going to be on actually implementing those previous audits as opposed to just doing another one. Uh, again, you can have the best audit in the world, but so what if you don't actually implement it? That's got to be the focus. So looking at that, looking at workers' comp issues in the city, looking at risk management, uh, looking at how we do our purchasing and procurement, one of my personal obsessions actually is sales tax paid by the city. City pays sales tax on pretty much everything it buys, just like you and I do. They're not exempt. And looking at how much we pay for that sales tax and what we can do to reduce that and how we can pay more of it to ourselves because much of it we are paying to other jurisdictions. It doesn't make a great deal of sense. So that means looking at how we do our procurement and our purchasing to make more sense out of it. I think we are at a really critical but also exciting juncture in the city. And we have three new citywide officers. And there's an opportunity, of course the controller is independent and has to be able to criticize and sometimes bang people over the head for what's being done that's not right. But there's an equally great opportunity, I've always believed, <coughs> to really work with everybody in the city and find some solutions that people can collaborate on. And I want to be really in the center of being able to do that, especially with half a new city council and, and a whole new crop of citywide officers. 
So enough said on all of this. I thought maybe you've got a couple of questions. Uh, if you do, I'm happy to take them. And I am honored to be soon serving as your next controller. And uh, I expect that you will come forward with your ideas, your thoughts, occasionally your criticisms, and uh, it's all part of the process. So thank you very much for the honor of serving. I have Hello. a few suggestions since I watch the city on a daily basis. Okay, great. Records. One is look at public works. Some of those special funds are tied up in accounts that can no longer be identified. There are old numbers that don't follow through the new numbers, even in that office. Secondly, they're contracting out to nonprofits on a no bid basis. General services is about 11% overhead. I'm hearing these nonprofit contracts are 25. Big difference. These, the contract system is broken in the city of LA. In many Big ways, by the way, on many, many levels. In many levels of each department. We need a handle on these things. Thank you. I, I, I agree with you 100%. I want to just make one quick comment, by the way, when you talk about the contracting system uh, being broken. There's one contract that I actually looked at. It was about a year and a half ago. And this is a contractor who actually gets compensated for all their out-of-pocket costs. But in addition to that, they get a 10% markup on all of their out-of-pocket costs. If I give you a 10% markup on all your out-of-pocket costs, what is your incentive to reduce your out-of-pocket costs? Zero. What's your incentive to inflate them? Tremendous. So it, I, I wonder who allowed such a clause to actually get into a contract. Now, mind you, the controller, it's a bit of a misnomer, doesn't get to control everything. But certainly does get to identify the issues, call attention to them, and see that Hopefully, they get resolved in, in some good way. Thank you. Hi, Ron. I'm Paul Hatfield for Council Valley. As if I didn't know. I know. All right. Uh, three quick things. Number one, um, we need better disclosure of financial statements on the pension liabilities. Now, I might suggest that perhaps show different scenarios under different earnings rate assumptions. Uh, secondly, I think it's also time that we shop around for a new external auditor. Simpson, Simpson has been doing the job for several years. My concern is that they might be getting too comfortable with the audit. And it's not unusual, by the way, for organizations to go shopping for new auditors every so many years. And then lastly, your point was well taken about uh, you know, an audit that's only effective if it's implemented. Part of the implementation, though, is the quality of the management. And you know, have to look at the city over the last several years or even longer, and you have to really wonder if, in fact, our managers have been doing an effective job. Um, I know that uh, Mayor Alec Garcetti wants to make each GM interview for his or her job. I would like to suggest that you be part of that process as well and provide your insight into in terms of what a good manager would be. I think that would help a lot. Thanks. Thank you so much. And I, I want to also just comment real quickly on what you said. Because, by the way, you've been a leader on pointing out so many very, very important things. First of all, when it comes to department managers, if you are in many departments, okay, let's say you find a way this year to save money and not actually spend your full allocation. Again, what is likely to happen next year? You don't get it. It, it will be swept by, by, the, by the council, and it will then be taken away. And then what will happen the following year is that you will perhaps get budgeted for less money. So what is your incentive as a department manager to actually save money? And we have to kind of begin to explore how we can change those incentives and disincentives. I don't, I don't claim that I have the answer to it, but there are some interesting paradigms that have been put out there. And I think we've got to look at that in addition to who we pick as our managers. Oh. Uh, Jack, I'm from the Great Ocean Neighborhood Council. Jack. Amazing. Good morning. Amazing I'm opening my mouth once again. <laughs> uh, uh, now, my, my, my comment, my question, uh, my thought is, I think it would be very worthwhile for people from the neighborhood councils to be able to participate in some way or form in the surveys for the three proprietary departments, DWP, the port, and the harbor. And the reason I say so is that these are exceptionally important economic entities. They probably control about 25 to $35 billion worth of assets, and they are key to the city. And I think some of us uh, would like to have a little bit better understanding and a little more say about how these important things are run. Thank you. Absolutely correct, by the way. Now, the last uh, industrial economic and uh, administrative survey was done in Lala. Supposedly, 
uh, had roughly about 3,500 stakeholders that were interviewed in one fashion or another, plus about 1,500 employees. But what the nature of that was and how deep that was is a little still unclear to me, and I'm, I'm trying to clarify that because I want to make sure that as we touch all those stakeholders that the feedback actually is meaningful and that when we get that feedback, we actually do something with it. Yeah, uh, from my perspective, these are businesses, and we need to take a look at not only the politics of this thing, but how they run, how efficient they are, and you know, what's their market share, let's say at the harbor, for example, which is going down. Thank you. Thank you. Joy. Joy. He's the one with the microphone. <laughs> Joanne Bennett Clark, first associate of her council, and also a budget advocate. Um, two things. One, will you have any input on performance based budgeting, which we have been recommending for the past couple of years, and it's still in process? And two, what about the core recommendations? Are you going to be able to affect many more of the core recommendations? Uh, two great questions, but one on performance-based budgeting, which I think is really important to change the budgeting paradigm in the city of LA in a whole variety of ways, including that. Again, the controller in and of uh, themselves does not get to, to do that. You need really the mayor and you need the council, but I think we're sort of at a pivotal point where we can have that, uh, that possibility really come to be, and I, I want to be part of pushing for that. As far as the court uh, uh, commission is concerned, that's the Commission on Revenue Efficiency, uh, which was created to reform collections. Uh, I served as its chair. Uh, we first came out with a blueprint of reform for city collections with 65 recommendations, and then a series of eight reports on a variety of things from assets to, uh, uh, to procurement, et cetera. And I have been working to see that many of them are implemented. I am not at all satisfied with the number of them that have actually been implemented. And you bet, and plus I feel very proprietary about them, I have to concede, uh, I want to see them implemented, and I'm going to be relentless about it. Hey, Brian. Uh, my name is Dr. Camarillo. I'm with the cell phone with Council. And are you prepared to end the policy of the city at the end of fiscal year? Use it or lose it. I worked for the city for 30 years, and that's a lot of money that could have been saved. You know, I, I think you really, again, put your finger on that, and we were just talking about that a moment ago, of uh, sort of a system of incentives and disincentives, and this use it or lose it, and there's something that is really problematic about that use it or lose it, because then there's a great incentive to use it, and I think we've got to change that. So exactly how we do is still to be determined, and it's going to be dependent on department by department in many ways, but a tremendous opportunity to do that. Yes, I have one question. I hope it's appropriate. Um, several people knew Caroline Gary, and I live in Highland Park, Eagle Rock. I'm on the Avenue 49 Division Line uh, up by Occidental College. Several people have asked me to ask you. I've never heard of you before. By the way, Ron K. told me you want the best man in both for you. So I did. <laughs> and I told all my neighbors. But the question is this. We are different in CD14 that we have a fund called the Clark's Fund. Would you please, everybody has begged, begged, written, written, no response. We know there's close to a million dollars in that fund at this time. Would you please find a way or ask people from CD14 that are in CPAs or something to volunteer to assist you and do an audit on them? We beg you. Thank you. Um, thank you very much. You don't have to beg me uh, because it's actually, I think, a very important thing to do. And it's, it's part of that whole picture of all of those many special funds. And that's just one of a huge number that are in the hundreds of millions of dollars. So that's actually the top of my list. Thank you. And send me an email with some details about this. <laughs> um, I will give you my card. Go ahead. Glenn Bailey, also budget advocate. Uh, the auditor, the, when the controller did the audit on neighborhood council several years ago, and she went on the road, and I think there was probably one or two meetings. Um, but I think that brings up in a suggestion, maybe that's what you were getting at, of when you do come out with an audit, especially if it's based on services or departments that neighborhood councils deal with, it might be a good thing to bring them together 
representatives of them, at least of the regional alliances, but maybe invite representatives of the council to actually be there with you and your staff to understand more in depth and ask questions about the audits. So when we go back out into our communities, we can say, yeah, we know about this audit on this particular department, and this is what the recommendations are. Because ultimately, I think bringing those issues to light to get the implementation of the audits and getting that public support is what we have to try to find. And it seems to me that maybe that's a way that you could help mobilize that public support by you know, focusing in communication with the neighborhood councils. I, I agree with you 100%, by the way. And I think it's not just a good idea, but I think it's, it's legally obligatory. Because what I, what I used to do, especially as a neighborhood council person, and I advise everybody to do this every now and then, is go back and refresh yourself with what the city charter actually says about neighborhood councils and with what your obligations are as neighborhood council members. And one of them is actually in the assessment of city services. And that is, I think, ultimately one of the most important functions that the neighborhood council serve. So I, I want to actually be able to help in the uh, compliance, in fact, with that legal obligation. Speaking of which, legal obligations, uh, <laughs> welcome to our uh, city attorney, Alliance. And, and congratulations to you. And, and I have to say, I really look forward to working with you in so many ways as, as we have in the past. And uh, our city has a fantastic uh, city attorney, Alliance. So, uh, and I, I'm really fortunate to have the opportunity to be working with you. So, congratulations. Very much the same way. And we group hug too. Thank you. Thank you. And I think this is it. My name is Dee Dee I'm Dee Dee. And I'm so glad to meet you. You're making me happy. I voted for you. Oh, thank you. But I have a little request. Okay, I hope you still feel the same way four years from now, by the way. So it's my job to make sure that's the case. Keep it up. Now, <clears throat> just come for me, MOU meeting, and I am the MOU rep from Venice. It occurs to me, in my past experience, that sometimes clerical timing can make a huge difference. Bringing people together. Will you please see to it that your office and our repair advocate are working from the same set of documents. Absolutely. Same set of documents, same set of calendar, and, uh, and actually on a regular basis really uh, being in touch with each other. And being on the same page in terms of what the inquiries are going to be of the repair advocate as well as what uh, the controllers are going to be. It doesn't do anybody any good to be operating in a vacuum, but it's a very good reminder. Hello, I'm Mary Dunson, former budget advocate and uh, currently city employee. Uh, my concern is with the city's collection policy. Uh, we, I, recently, I went through what various uh, entities owed in our Northeast Valley, uh, now District 7, corner of the world. It was almost $700,000 that the city later wrote off. And that is my big concern, is that if the buildings are too little, too late, not timely, we run a business for a long time. If we build our customers six months, eight months after we perform the service, sometimes they wouldn't even be in business. And it's a big concern of mine if you feel that this is a revenue stream that the city is constantly on the back end of and losing. I would love to have an even longer conversation with you on that subject because this was one of my great obsessions and still is for a very long time, and which is why the whole uh, Commission on Revenue Efficiency came into being. Because at the time, there was about $500 billion in non-tax receivables that are on the books. Although much of that, admittedly, non-collectible for a whole variety of reasons. Much of it not legally collectible, much of it phantom debt. But we came forward with a set of recommendations that would actually streamline the process. And by the way, make it much easier to pay. The easier you make it to pay, the more likely you are to get that money. So 
if you've got some specific ideas, then I would like to, to work with you on this. Thank you. This is going to be our last uh, question because we have to get uh, City Attorney Elect Fury in because he has to leave at 1130. So, this is the last question. Kenneth Weirich, um, People Union Neighbor Council and the Boyle Heights Neighbor Council. Um, first off, just congratulations on, on you know, your, your position. And I just wanted to bring a couple of things. Um, during an advocate meeting, we were told that there's a um, a browser-based accounting system that the city purchased at some hundreds of thousands of dollars that was starting in the planning department and in the street lighting. And, and I want to, I've mentioned it at several meetings that that would be something that would be good if the neighborhood council, especially as regions, could tap in and aggregate um, dollars and figures and accounting at that level. And then the second thing, um, starting as of today, there's a three-month project that the, um, the IT department is doing on an open government project, and they selected the Esri company who just put up a website that was sent to me yesterday to actually do an open data project, which would also be a great program initiative for us to tie into from a financial and demographical basis. These are really great observations. Thank you so much. And um, something that I'm, I'm trying to get a real feel for all of the various accounting systems and online systems uh, and software that we have in the city. They're, one of the largest ones is the so-called FMS system, or financial management system. And it has been implemented over time. It's actually resulted in some good improvements, but there are also some modules of it that are still missing. Moreover, the info that it spits out is only as good as the info that is put into it, as with, with any kind of, of, uh, of system like that. And I have some issues with the data that is being put in there, which in some ways I think is corrupting the data that comes out of it. So that's on the agenda, and thank you for the card. No standing bar been to work with so many of you in this room, how much I'm looking forward to doing so in the coming years, and uh, what, uh, what progress you have seen and done, and what opportunities there are yet to achieve. So again, thank you. I'm going to have an open door, an open email, and uh, look forward to the ideas, the thoughts, occasionally, of course, even the criticisms. And all of that is going to be very helpful in making sure that we can do the best job possible at the controller's office. So thank you very, very much.